My name is Daryl Halterman. I'm the Propinet and IO Product Solutions Manager here at G Intelligent Platforms. And we're on this webinar this morning to talk about PAC systems with high availability and improving your total cost of ownership of an application with PAC systems high availability using Propinet. I will be running, in addition to a brief presentation, there will be a couple of demonstrations that I will perform this morning. And then I uh, will probably leave about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So uh, if you do have questions that come up during the discussion, please feel free to post those uh, to the chat, as Yolanda mentioned, and we'll go ahead and get to those at the end of the hour. So quick bit of overview. Of course, GE is one of the world's largest uh, critical infrastructure companies on Earth, building everything from uh, gas turbines and water treatment equipment, trains, and the healthcare equipment, uh, things that build power and move, uh, that help to move our customers uh, as well as society forward. So GE Intelligent Platforms helps you uh, get connected to that wonderful, robust infrastructure uh, from GE uh, by helping to connect to brilliant machines. GE, as well as many of our customers, have many fleets of sophisticated pieces of equipment, complicated systems that require a very intelligent level of uh, control solution, all the way down to, to more basic systems that are in support of some of those more complicated assets. And uh, we provide the ability uh, to connect those machines to users so that uh, they can actually operate them in an optimal way and also uh, maintain them for, for optimal usage. Uh, we combine uh, that connectivity with a robust set of advanced analytics software that will allow you, again, to, to monitor and optimize assets, whether it be a single system or a fleet uh, distributed across the globe, and provide a variety of levels of service uh, from essentially allowing you to have access to the data all the way up to being able to monitor and analyze those assets for you using predictive algorithms to help improve cost of ownership, uh, both for individual assets as well as fleet. And as it is ever increasingly important in this uh, connected world today, we allow and enable access to all of that data and information to the right people with the right access, authorization, and uh, security uh, anywhere, anytime to help people make uh, intelligent decisions with that information to optimize their products or fleet. So how we do that, uh, we have a multi-layered architecture that starts out at the most basic level, connecting uh, sensors and actuators uh, in the physical world to a control system in real time. And uh, we do that using uh, Profinet as the IO communications baseline for that. And that has the benefit uh, by being an open standard of connecting not only to our full fleet of IO, but uh, to a rich third party ecosystem uh, if you have specialty needs for an application. We use that Profinet communications to transmit and data efficiently to node edge node control systems, like our PAC systems RX3i product, that can homogenize and categorize that data so that it can then be sent on to people or to higher level control applications for a further analysis. We then, of course, you know, like I said, have a set of analytic software that can act on that data uh, to turn it into information that can then be sent to operators or employees anywhere uh, so that they have the latest information in real time at their fingertips. So today we'll have a focus on mission critical applications, as this is one of the, the strengths of the GE uh, company. When we talk about mission critical applications, we really mean products or applications where there's a substantial impact to downtime. Uh, that can be uh, financial or quality of the customer or their, their process. And why would uh, you choose GE in that type of place? Well, GE certainly has a best class high availability solution uh, with PAC systems, high availability with Propinet. We have a rich and long history of creating high availability control systems, stretches back more than 30 years, and we certainly uh, use those same products in our own uh, original equipment. So not only are we confident that we can help you to optimize your product or your customer's product, but we, we use the same equipment to optimize our own products. The solution is very flexible, scalable, and allows for integrated architectures. Again, we can harness all that data with intelligent analytics software and visualization to be able to turn it into information that can be used to optimize. 
simplifies uh, that process or as, as may be necessary. So as I mentioned, in a critical uh, mission critical application, certainly downtime is counted in seconds and the, the impacts can, can rack up very quickly. So if you have an example of a system that didn't have a high availability backup by a lightning strike, which is a fairly common occurrence uh, in infrastructure and in critical infrastructure applications since they are outside, you know, you could have a, a backup generator that failed or a critical cooling failed, something that caused uh, a plant or a facility or an asset to shut down. You know, for example, an average data center downtime, when you think of uh, people that are trying to access their iTunes or possibly uh, healthcare information that's out there on the cloud, uh, that can cost the data, data center as much as $5,600 a minute on average. And, you know, a power outage on average uh, in the U.S. lasts about 90 minutes. So a single outage could cost a half a million dollars. But not only does it hit the immediate bottom line, but in an, an increasingly competitive world, uh, unhappy customers may go out and look for alternatives to those services that they deem more reliable. So not only does it have a potential impact on the immediate bottom line, but you can also potentially impact your future revenues or, or customer growth by impacting your, your reputation. So, so really it is about you know, protecting the things that are critical to the success of your a uh, prime example of that, eBay. eBay's Topaz data centers use uh, GE's high availability redundancy uh, control solution for their backup power and critical management. eBay does more than $60 billion a year in transactions, which, and in their case, downtime for that data center could cost them more than $2,000 a second. They trust their solution to GE, and we're, we're confident in being able to provide the, the availability that they need to protect their customers as well as their, their revenue streams. So when we talk about traditional mission critical applications, think of backup power and, and critical cooling and those kind of applications, say generator, backup generator set management, uh, automatic transfer switch uh, management coordination, control parallel switching gear to manage the interface between you know, those backup generators and the grid when they, when they go down and, and when the uh, grid comes back as well as un uninterruptible power supplies you know, for those absolutely critical applications. And those can be spread across many uh, different industries. So thinking of data centers and office buildings, healthcare applications, critical communications or infrastructure such as airports. And it can also uh, stretch out to fleets of those types of applications and operation centers or in aggregated cooling systems if, if you happen to be in a larger city. But the... Uh, PAC systems, high availability with profiling is actually appropriate for a wide variety of critical control applications across a number of industries. So as, as we mentioned, you know, oftentimes backup power critical cooling come to mind as being the first types of applications that would be appropriate for this type of solution. But also in the transportation space, you think about mass transit or metro systems, tunnel ventilation, environmental controls for subway platforms or for tunnels motor control centers, marine applications where you might take similar types of applications and of course then put them on a, a floating ship, power generation, steering and propulsion, cargo management and the like. Also in the oil and gas space, in the upstream area you might have you know alternative lift or artificial lift for alternative recovery or separation systems. So oftentimes the material that comes out of the ground is you know not pure oil, it's a mix of gas and other water and other things that need to be separated and maintained. In the midstream space, you can think about compressors, things for pipeline control, pumping stations, or basic processing for compressed natural gas and, and the like. Again, anywhere that you would look at an application where the cost of downtime could have environmental impact or, you know, uh, the cost of downtime really hits the bottom line. Mining is another great example of an industry that could benefit from this type of solution. Anything from handling, conveyance, commutation, all the way out to some of those larger extraction systems, you know, you think huge drag lines or shovels. Uh, certainly having one of those sit idle you know, can really rack up the cost. And also uh, water and wastewater treatment. For industry, of course, you know, we think about clean water as being uh, critical to, to maintaining the quality of products that are being developed or, or transferred. But certainly the, the end consumer uh, expects that when they turn on a tap here in the U.S. and in lots of places abroad, they're going to have access to good clean water and can certainly uh, cause inconveniences as, as well as other issues if, you know, they don't have access to clean water for any amount of time or water treatment for that matter, which certainly helps the overall water quality. So again, you know, the, the critical, mission critical applications 
certainly have a, a broad applicability across a range of application spaces and, and segments, but really just around a place and thinking where time is, is valuable in those applications. So we'll talk a little more about what the PAC systems high availability with ProfiNet solution provides and, and how it can help to improve the cost of ownership for your application or your customer's application. So this is a high availability architecture that ensures maximum uptime and a flexible intelligent system. It can be uh, customized in a number of ways to, to meet specific mission critical applications, be they cost or footprint or specific uh, specialized I.O. I'll uh, kind of reference the picture over to the right here as a quick summary. It is a hot standby redundancy system that consists of two RX3i uh, CPU racks uh, with redundant synchronization that can switch those systems over in as fast as one PLC scan. So you're never uh, out of control or waiting in, in an application like this. And of course, uh, we can support up to 255 I.O. devices off of the redundant control pair. And uh, we, we have a variety of I.O. that we mix in with that. So uh, to meet a number of applications of prints or uh, requirements. This system has been optimized and streamlined to significantly improve the experience that a customer has both installing and maintaining the system with, with integrated components, networking components, that allows simple point-to-point -point connection of the control and remote I.O. devices, allows for a speedy, speedy installation of a very simple system with fewer parts to install, operate, and maintain, and that can substantially reduce the overall total cost of ownership for any application. So some specific points about how the system uh, can help you lower total cost of ownership. First and foremost, it keeps the process running with uninterrupted control through defects, maintenance, or system updates. This is a nice improvement over the previous uh, GE Intelligent platforms. High availability systems that we've had in the past with this solution, we actually can make hardware configuration changes while the application is running as well, so three plus. We ensure a high-speed connection to the remote I.O. with Profinet. Of course, it's a leading open standard, but GE has taken full advantage of that. Uh, we offer gigabit communications, as well as built-in support for multi-mode single mode fiber, uh, as well as standard copper. So if you have a variety of distances in between your remote I.O. drops, you can mix and match the media type as best fits your application without buying or installing or maintaining additional networking tools. The RX3i ProfiNet scanners uh, have an embedded 4.4 Ethernet switch, which means that even when running uh, a ring redundancy or uh, network redundancy, they still have two extra ports that you can use to even connect third-party peripherals to the system, which is a, a nice benefit. And kind of the picture on the right here, uh, we certainly show, you know, attaching one of our quick panel pluses into the control solution. We can, because Profinet has the ability to prioritize traffic on the network, we can have that uh, HMI traffic running across the network and still maintain priority for the, the remote I.O., which leads to the best of both worlds and a better utilization of that network network infrastructure. The design has a single point of configuration and name-based configuration to make for simple easy setup and intuitive maintenance. For example, you don't have to keep a cheat sheet that tells you what IP addresses are associated with what remote I.O. nodes. If the station happens to be Pump Station 1, you would just name it Pump Station 1 in your control application as, as well as in your visualization and that's how it's identified in the system. Configuration for that would be stored uh, from the CPU for the entire network, uh, so that allows a very easy way to be able to, to initialize and maintain a system. And again, as I mentioned, uh, the system is designed wherever possible to eliminate the need for external network switches or media converters by integrating those into the fleet of I.O. and control solutions that we offer. And all that together can reduce the cost and complexity for up to 30 percent or uh, total cost of ownership for an application. So when we talk about the main capabilities of the system, how is it redundant, how does it provide that high level of availability, the system is able to survive any of the following uh, incidents, notify the operator that they occurred, and allow for repair while the application continues to operate. 
operate. So it can both uh, detect and rhyme through the failure of a CPU and, and recovering of that system. It can both detect and rhyme through the failure of any of the I.O. nodes uh, in the remote system. It can detect, uh, point you to where it failed, and then rhyme through the recovery of a network cable uh, in the system. And that's even if you're using maintenance mode, there's a neat a patented feature in the Versamax Remote I.O. that allows you to tri-state the outputs and leave the network interface up and running so that you can make modifications to wiring uh, or change uh, carriers in the Versamax family without uh, breaking your network. The RX3i has the benefit of having the removable terminal blocks on top of the I.O., so it doesn't need this feature, but the great news is we give you an equivalent capability in, in our uh, entry-level solution as well with the maintenance mode feature in Versamax. The system operates reliably in the event that uh, one or both of the redundancy synchronization links are lost. A little sideline on this, uh, a nice enhancement uh, to the, the system over some of our traditional uh, control systems in the event that they uh, lost synchronization, uh, where both PLCs would continue to operate and some I.O. may stay with the primary and some I.O. may stay with the secondary uh, in the PAC system's high availability with Profinet solution, as long as the backup controller is not the point of failure. Uh, the system will always roll over to the backup in the event that the system goes non synchronized, so we have a very deterministic outcome in the event of loss, in the unlikely event of loss of synchronization of CPUs, which, like I said, is a, a nice enhancement over some of the, the legacy systems that we have available with other communications protocols. The system does allow you to put standalone CPU into run mode. This is nice uh, if you know a customer wants to do some commissioning checkout and either doesn't have time or doesn't want to install the second CPU, or for customers that are considering a high availability solution but not sure if they want to make the investment. Initially, they can start off a system with a single CPU, have it up and operating, and then add a second CPU to provide the full system redundancy at a later time. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, the system with Profinet does allow us to make configuration changes to the remote I.O. devices through the CPU without stopping the process, which is a nice feature enhancement of our high availability solution that becomes available because of the capabilities of Profinet. So we'll move on to some frequently asked questions about the high availability with Profinet solution. So, you know, one of the first questions that we often get is, so why are we talking about Profinet? You know, I have, I have Genius, I have Profibus, I have a hardwired system. Uh, what, what benefits do I get moving to an open standard Ethernet communications protocol? Uh, Profinet itself brings a number of advantages to the customer. Uh, those include, you know, broad coverage for discrete process application. Uh, it's standards-based, uh, multiple levels of real-time control. It's really optimized uh, for performance in mid-to-heavy traffic. Uh, which means that, you know, as the system scales, the, the protocol really shines. It certainly works just fine if you have, you know, one or two I.O. drops out there, but again, it scales very nicely, uh, which means that, you know, if you're growing an application or concerned about growing an application or a system, it's a good protocol to support that. Um, and again, it's an open standard, you know, with a broad ecosystem of vendors providing Profinet-enabled devices, more of them every day, uh, more than a thousand out there as last I checked. Uh, so lots of options uh, if you happen to have a specialty need that you know, can't be met by a, a GE Intelligent Platform product. There, there are ready solutions that we can drop in and treat like native I.O. Of course, uh, you know, as, as GE embraced the open standard, there are certainly things that we have done both with our hardware and with our uh, software solutions to provide you know, an, an advantage and a great experience for our customers. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the single point of configuration and name-based configuration uh, substantially streamlines and simplifies the configuration process for control applications and debugging. Very simple point-to-point -point network connection, uh, again, because we have built-in Ethernet switches uh, with support for multimedia. Uh, you can just wire point-to-point -point like you would have with a, a legacy bus, but have the benefit of having, you know, uh, high-speed gigabit Ethernet communications in either copper, multi-mode, or single-mode fiber, allowing you to put those 
uh, remote points up to 70 kilometers away with a, with a direct uh, fiber connection. So it's uh, really flexible, but really simple. And then a high-speed execution and integrated switchover. The GE uh, PAC Systems High Availability Solution has one of the best, most responsive high availability switchover systems out there uh, built on uh, reflective memory uh, synchronization link that runs 2.1 gigabaud, uh, allowing two megabits per second or two megabytes per second of data to be uh, transferred between each PLC, each PLC sweep, switch over you know, in, in a single PLC scan. Uh, so very high speed, very high performance, uh, very reliable uh, high availability solution. And again, as I mentioned, you know the built-in uh, switches and fiber capacity substantially simplify panel layout, uh, installation, and maintenance, improving the overall uh, experience of the customer. And on top of that, then we have, you know, a wonderful user interface in our uh, Prophecy Machine Edition software for both configuring and maintaining those applications. And uh, I'll demonstrate a little bit of that later on in this presentation. So one of the frequent questions that comes up is how does Profinet compare to a traditional Ethernet I/O solution? And we have to have uh, you know a picture of one of our uh, high availability with EGD solutions, but this can certainly be any of a number of uh, competitive solutions that are based on uh, a, a legacy solution. For starters, there are fewer uh, network components to purchase, install, and maintain. No need for Ethernet external Ethernet switches or media converters is built into the solution. Less network cable to install. So a traditional high availability systems that use a full dual LAN, it means that anywhere that you run a single cable, you have to run a second cable, uh, which effectively doubles uh, the cost of cable layout. It's not just uh, the cost of the cable itself, but certainly you know, the labor uh, to put cable in conduit can, can get expensive. Uh, with the Profinet solution, you get high speed, uh, reliable media redundancy uh, with the ring technology simply for the cost of running a cable from your last node back to the control solution to complete a ring. That system can recover in as quickly as three milliseconds, uh, allowing multiple communications uh, at a very high high speed of performance or high rate of performance. We have a single point of connect for configuration. So configurations are sent to the ELC and then disseminated across the network in the ProcoNet solution. Whereas in a traditional system, you'd have to connect to each of the devices individually and store that over the network of those devices, which is time consuming and error prone. Also, as I mentioned, we provide capability for run mode updates of program and hardware configurations to Profinet solution, meaning that uh, if you need to add remote I.O. nodes, if you need to change uh, settings such as set points for an analog channel or uh, something of that nature, uh, you can do that to the system while it is running. That, that substantially uh, cuts the cost of downtime. You know, so no longer do you have to you know, have a three-day weekend to schedule maintenance on a system. You can actually perform uh, upgrades or maintenance on the system while it is operating. So how can the system uh, fit my application? As I mentioned earlier, this solution is designed uh, to be customized in a number of ways to meet uh, a variety of mission critical applications uh, while providing a more cost effective solution for the customer. Because of the built in switches and media converters, uh, there's less space required in the cabinet, less power consumed in that cabinet, and less equipment to set up, which leads to both reduced costs in terms of the equipment as well as the, the setup and maintenance time. We have a variety of I.O. solutions that are supported uh, with this product, including Versamax, RS3, RX3i, uh, rack-based I.O., and the RX3i single-slot CPP, which meet a variety of the print, environmental, and price point requirements. Uh, and again, we can mix up to 255 redundant I.O. products into that solution, uh, which gives a very broad scale to the solution. I mentioned, you know, we have a an I.O. family and footprint to meet virtually any customer application. The CEP certainly fits nicely in the same footprint. Uh, it's actually smaller than, but fits nicely in the same footprint as the Genius Block. Customers who were using those in a previous GE application uh, and can lead to a, a nice migration path. And I will also note another nice feature here. No need to, to provide an extra switch. 
switch out there if you want to hook in an operator interface or a product that uses Modbus TCP or another protocol. That can be tunneled right across the ProCunet uh, communications wire. And because the system does prioritize the ProCunet communications, uh, it means that that uh, communications data won't interfere with your critical control in that application. So take advantage of that nice gigabit pipe to feed in that data, take advantage of the, the extra ports built into that system. But, but again, a real streamlined, very clean solution with, with all the built-in capability. So talk about it being you know, an intelligent system, a system that provides uh, intelligence, and how does it do that? This system, you know, based on an Ethernet backbone, enables uh, a high, high volume of data to be collected for analysis and, and decision making, which can lead to better metrics and, and better decision making for a control application. You uh, provide, uh, through our control solutions, uh, visibility for both local and remote operations and process management. Uh, so if you have a single system or you have a fleet, uh, or you have, you know, fleet of facilities, uh, those things can all be viewed and managed in real time through this solution. And as well as uh, built-in support for real-time uh, health monitoring and diagnostics, uh, again, that can keep you on top of the health and availability of the system, uh, allowing you to, to ward off unexpected downtime to be able to debug systems very quickly and efficiently. So again, you know, for your mission critical application, don't compromise on uptime. The GE high availability solution with Profinet delivers very consistent critical control and system availability, eliminates single points of failure for, for the entire system, helps with concurrent availability without a loss of data during system switchover, and all that leads to uh, a lower total cost of ownership uh, for that control solution. Now we'll move over to a couple of quick demonstrations, show some of the capabilities and benefits of the, the control solution. The first demonstration that I'm going to show is just uh, very quickly adding a, a, a device to the system. Uh, in this case, it would be an RX3 ICDP unit with, with an IO module on it. So I'm going to switch over here now to Prophecy Machine Edition. The uh, folks can see my screen there. So, uh, in the navigator window here to the left of uh, Prophecy Machine Edition, I've got a sample Profinet system redundancy application. You'll notice that uh, configuration includes uh, a primary and a secondary uh, PLC hardware configuration. This includes the uh, local CPUs, Ethernet communications module for HMI SCADA systems, programming, as well as the Profinet. Uh, Profinet controller module for ac accessing and communicating with remote I.O. A very nice uh, feature is instead of having uh, additional targets in the application to provide that remote I.O., the Profinet modules and devices are configured in line with the PLC configuration, just like they were in the main rack. And uh, adding another device to an existing system is as easy as right-clicking on the Profinet controller, selecting Add I.O. Device, this is a list of configuration files that I have uh, on my computer. As you can see a broad range of products. So I'll select uh, the RX3 ICDP, which is our newest addition to the family. It's a single slot uh, RX3 I backlink that includes a redundant network interface as well as redundant power supply interface for 24 volt DC. And as you can see, I selected that and it's dropped right into the uh, configuration under that ProConnect controller. If I double-click on it, I'll get some configuration parameters. You'll notice that uh, since this product supports uh, system redundancy and I've added it to a redundant system, uh, it automatically configures it for hot standby redundancy. In this system, we are uh, using MRP for media redundancy so that uh, failure in the network doesn't slow the system down. So I will select client in the role. There's, of course, only one uh, media redundancy manager in that ring. Uh, and typically we put that in the, one of the uh, hot standby CPU 
CPUs, although it could be located in a, another device that does support uh, media redundancy management capabilities. But of course, you know, the devices that are in there uh, should support uh, media redundancy protocol in, in client mode. The system will automatically provide uh, I.O. references and automatically add those to our redundancy transfer list and synchronize the system. I'm going to make some quick updates here because I've got uh, a few variables already uh, included in the, in the application that uh, some reference address is set for. You'll notice it defaulted the system to a redundant power supply. Of course, we do expect this to be a high availability system. I mention that because uh, we'll uh, actually be tinkering with this in a, a follow-on demonstration, so just kind of uh, keep that in mind for right now. Adding I.O. modules uh, to an existing or an added Profinet I.O. device is as simple as right-clicking on the device and saying, selecting change module list. So in this case, I've got uh, an MDL 742 16-point discrete output module uh, in slot 1, and I uh, don't have a slot 2 on this, so select OK on that. And you'll notice that slot 1 is now populated in my config. I can then select configure that, and I get one module option on here, which is where I want the output data. Again, this would automatically be added to the redundancy transfer list at this address. But I've got, uh, for this application, I've got a different one selected, so I can change that if I want to. Uh, but it's really, you know, it's meant to streamline uh, the configuration process. So now that I have added and configured, uh, a couple other things here, I'll just kind of mention the update rates. Uh, you can set those as appropriate. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set this to a 16 millisecond update rate. There is a reference variable uh, for the I.O. device. This can be used to monitor the health of the device uh, without having any other information than the device name. So I will uh, configure that. And there are a couple of other settings. You'll notice it has a device name. Uh, I'm using this as the default. Uh, you can change this to be whatever is most meaningful in your application. The device does have an IP address that is auto-assigned uh, based on the Profinet controller that you're added into. Uh, but you can change that if you need to. And uh, really, that's, that's all the configuration there is to the system. Now you notice that I added this to the primary configuration. To get that IO device added to the secondary PLC's configuration, all I have to do is right click on the hardware config and under redundancy select uh, bare redundant Profinet IO devices. And it is automatically added as a pure mirror into the secondary configuration. So, and that's really all there is uh, to configuring remote I.O. devices in the Profinet uh, solution. Now, if I want to store this new configuration to my redundant PLC pair, a new feature for Prophecy Machine Edition 8.6 is uh, allowing to do a dual uh, stop mode store. So, uh, of course, we have to go into online mode and then we'll be allowed to select a download of the configuration, and then you'll notice that there's a new option uh, right to both redundant controllers. So all we have to do is select that. It will warn you that it will stop your process to, to do the dual remote store, but in this case, since we're uh, starting up a system, that's just fine. And you'll notice in the feedback zone that it will actually uh, connect and store to both my primary and my secondary PLC with no additional uh, intervention. So this will take just a few moments. primary PLC. It's now uh, connected to the secondary PLC and starting the download uh, and configuration of that system as well.
likely connects back to the primary, which is where I started the process. And again, we'll notice that all of that took place with a single click of a button and uh, uh, a single checkbox. So it's a nice feature enhancement uh, to our existing high availability solution, substantially simplifies uh, the process for the customer, and uh, again, allows uh, for quick and simple additions or development of hardware configurations, or like I said, it modifying existing ones as well. So uh, in support of this control application, I do have a sample view uh, application that I am going to uh, now start up in the uh, machine edition view simulator. Uh, so this is running on my uh, PLC. And you'll notice that uh, I am able to monitor the I.O. Uh, and the network health in real time. Uh, got a Another slide over here that's kind of showing the, the current status of the system. Uh, of course, I'll start uh, the secondary PLC, and you can see that uh, the system indicates that it went from stop to, to an active state, uh, but that the secondary is in control of this system. And uh, I'm doing all of this through uh, monitoring of configuration uh, and status bits uh, out of the PLC. Profinet controllers and scanners all have a 32-bit status word that comes back as part of the real-time data that allows you to monitor things like the health of the module, uh, the status of its network ports, uh, the status of uh, the network ring. And in the primary and secondary PLCs, there are uh, status bits that allow you to determine uh, which one of the PLCs is active, whether or not it's in stop and run mode, whether or not it's partners in stop and run mode, or a lot of capabilities that allow for a very quick, very simple uh, visualization of the health of the network. Okay, so I've got some feedback that folks may be having some trouble uh, seeing that uh, HMI screen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share this full monitor, and uh, hopefully folks have a better time seeing that. And like I mentioned, uh, you know, I was able to very quickly put together uh, this visualization of the control solution uh, that is uh, showing status of the system in real time. Um, I can, you know, roll switch the system seamlessly from the secondary being active to the primary being active. and uh, the system keeps up with that in real time. I'm also able to detect in real time status of any of the network communications connections. So I'm going to pull a, an Ethernet cable here between the primary PLC and the RX3 IPNS. Uh, and you can see that uh, indicated immediately that we've got a network connection failure. We'll also kind of switch over and notice that the I.O. continues to run in real time, even though we had a failure in the network. But you can, there are a number of ways that you can show, you know, the status of that network or its details. And you also know in real time when the a failure on the network is healed. So again, a very powerful capability, you know, for an operator, it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you have a failure and you have something like this, and, you know, you're certainly able to, to go in and with a minimal uh, understanding of the control solution be able to quickly pinpoint a failure uh, in your network or in your remote I.O. hardware, be able to go uh, with pinpoint accuracy, be able to fix that. Uh, and that definitely helps uh, in the total cost of ownership game by keeping down the cost of maintenance. Uh, you know, it requires a less skilled maintenance engineer to be able to perform the activities uh, and also less debugging time and effort required uh, in that as well. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, you're also able to monitor if you have any faults on the remote I.O. And so I, I'm showing that I have a fault on that CEP. And uh, we'll go back over to our uh, hardware configuration. As I mentioned earlier, the power supply for this was configured for redundant inputs, but I only have a single one in. It noticed. It notified me. So, you know, in traditional systems, I'd actually have to go stop either the remote I.O. node or the PLCs or the application to be able to, to update the system. And this will lead us to our, our second demonstration, which is actually I'm going to perform a uh, 
run mode, uh, updated the hardware configuration for the uh, for the RX3 IC. So as I mentioned, uh, we'll go back to the hardware configuration for the system. In this case, since I know it's a single uh, power supply rather than a redundant, I will change that in the hardware configuration. And then just mirror that update to the secondary configuration as well. Then I can actually, in this case, and it is one caveat, we do need to uh, stop the backup PLC uh, in this application space to do the hardware configuration update. The, the active CPU will continue operating, so the overall control solution will continue operating. We kind of show this, so I'm going to stop the uh, backup PLC. And now I'm going to download the updated configuration. Let's go ahead and download the thing. But again, this time not selecting both controllers because I don't want to stop that active PLC. And again, while the process continues to operate, and you can see the CEP outputs moving there, we are updating the backup controller. Okay, so that's stored successfully. I'm going to open that in a run mode. Again, as you can see, IO continues to update. So I'm going to disconnect uh, from the primary PLC. Go to the secondary. Show you the kind of roll switch over so that the primary with the updated config is now active. And while these two are mismatched, there, there will be a slight amount of time where this particular node that's being updated does go offline. However, it is minimal. You'll notice that when it picks up the new primary config, it default does clear on the system. So, I'm going to stop the uh, secondary, the now, which is now the backup system. Got to download. The updated hardware config. Um, I probably could have uh, avoided writing this to Flash since it is an exercise, but uh, take just a moment here to write it to Flash. But as you can see, I have been able to successfully update the hardware configuration of this application while it is in run mode, moving the fault on that CEP in, uh, while keeping the rest of the application up and running and continuing to maintain real-time connectivity to the solution. You know, being able to visualize it all in real-time as it's happening. So uh, it's a huge step forward with, uh, for GE and we believe for our customers and your customers. And I think at this point, this concludes demonstrations that you know I had planned for today. So if there are uh, questions, I'll go ahead and uh, Move forward to the Q&A portion of, of the hour.